Hello, and welcome to the instructional video for deflasking for Complete Dentures 2 for the Department of Restorative Dentistry in New York City College of Technology. My name is Professor Galvis. This video will show instruction on deflasking without the use of a flask ejector. To begin, remove the carrier press from the curing unit. Be sure that it has cooled to room temperature. If not, you run the risk of burning yourself. Next is to use your key to open up your carrier press and remove the flasks. With the use of a plaster knife, remove the lid of the flask. Although the Air Force Manual advises the use of a flask ejector, many times in laboratory settings you will find yourself without certain equipment. In the absence of a flask ejector, be sure to use a rubber mallet with strategic force. This will aid in retrieving the stone investment from the flask and not damaging the denture inside. Next, mark your areas for your right and left canines and your right and left distal ends of the stone investment. These areas are designated as where you will be placing cuts with a plaster saw later on. Before starting your cuts, always remove the occlusion cap of your stone investment. This will show you your incisal and occlusal surfaces that you freed during your flasking procedures. The occlusion cap is critical to deflasking. With the cap removed, you can now view all incisal and occlusal surfaces of the denture, which allows you to locate the denture within the investment. This aids in preventing you from cutting too deep and damaging the denture base or the denture teeth. Once the cuts have been completed, using a plaster knife, you can pry away the sections. If the cuts are too deep, you run the risk of damaging your denture base or denture teeth. And if the cuts are too shallow, the stone will not pry off with ease. Some of the more difficult anatomical structures to remove stone from during deflasking are the maxillary palatal area and the lingual tongue space of the mandibular. In order to do this safely, follow these procedures. Using a plaster saw to saw the tongue space or maxillary palatal area in half can aid in relieving the stone from those areas without the possibility of fracturing denture base or denture teeth. The techniques used in this video for mandibular deflasking are closely aligned to that of the Air Force Manual. In the absence of equipment and tools, some common unconventional methods can be used to deflask. Many technicians within the industry will make use of a hammer or rubber mallet and a plaster knife in order to deflask. This process may seem faster, but if care is not taken, you run a high risk of damaging the denture base or denture teeth. A more detailed account of how to perform these techniques can be found on the second instructional video for this session. Upon completion of the flasking, you are able to assess your flasking techniques, your boil-out procedures, and your packing and processing. You can do this by evaluating the acrylic. If you see porosity or areas that were underpacked, you can then reassess your techniques. Here we have one technique using a laboratory putty and the other without.